Hey guys, okay, we are finally live. Hopefully you can really, really hear us. I know we did one test where you couldn't hear us, and we did another test where we think you can hear us. I'm not getting any new text messages from people saying, we can't hear you, so hopefully you can hear me. Here's what we're doing. There's a lot of you guys in the group that are new, and when you join, you answer questions, and one of those questions is, what is your biggest struggle? Have you ever done freezer meal planning? Or have you ever done freezer meals? And so often I hear people who say either, I've never even heard of that, or they say, I've never tried it, I've seen it, looks interesting, never tried it, or I tried it a long time ago, only did a couple of meals, I feel like I failed, I'd love to know more. So here's what freezer cooking looks like. And this is perfect for this time of, it's, it's perfect for any time of the year, but it's really perfect for this time of the year right now when life is getting busy again and crazy again. I'm not sure what your school situation is or whether you're distance learning or your kids are going back to school or you're homeschooling like you've always done or whatever it is, doing freezer meals, this is going to save you so much time. If you can dedicate an hour and a half to put seven meals together or an hour to put seven meals together, it's going to save you so much time throughout the week or so much time throughout the month because you can use all of those meals in one week or you can just kind of put them in your freezer and use them here and there as you want to, okay? I have a brand new product over in the store, getdinnerontheTable.net. You want to hop over there. As soon as this video is over, I'm going to give you guys a direct link to this. But until then, you're going to have to go to getdinnerontheTable.net. It should be at the top. I just added it to the store. But if it doesn't pop up for some reason, you can just do a search in the little search bar up in the top right corner for the term budget. And it's 30 crock pot freezer mills on a budget. Okay? That's what this is. Inside here, you're going to get 30 different recipes. This is a, pr a downloadable printable. I send mine to Office Depot to have it spiral bound and to have a backing put on it and a clear cover because that just makes life so much easier for me. I like to take all of my little books like this and I keep them over here with my cookbooks and I have them on hand all the time. All of the different books that we have over in the store. So. You can just print it out or you can just look at it from your phone. You don't have to print it. You do what you want to do. All of them are in here, all 30 recipes, and it's a variety of meals. So we've got pork, we've got chicken, um, and it's not just chicken breast. We've got chicken thigh recipes. We have um, different beef recipes where it's ground beef, where it's roast, all kinds of things. And honestly, any of this stuff, you can have the freedom to change up however you want to. All of these recipes are budget friendly, so they're using common ingredients that you have on hand and they're all crock pot. So the instructions for cooking all of this is crock pot instructions. Now, the great news is if you've been cooking for any amount of time, you know that anything that you can cook in the stove can be cooked in the crock pot. Anything you cook on the stove top. So in the oven, stove top, wherever you're cooking it, the grill, anything can be converted to a slow cooker recipe. It's just a matter of converting your measurements, converting, usually it's converting your liquids and converting your, your cook times, okay? Any of these, if you decide, you know what, I have these smothered pork chops, I would rather do them in the oven, then do them in the oven. This is for you to decide, but we're giving you all of the instructions to do it for the crock pot, okay? And we're giving you all the instruction, instructions for them to be freezer meals. If you don't want to do them as freezer meals, then don't. Do it how you want to do it. Okay, so the recipes that I'm going to be making out of this book today is we're going to make cranberry orange chicken, so delicious. We're going to make garlic lemon butter chicken, so good. We're going to make creamy ranch pork chops, I'm excited for that. We're going to make hearty cowboy supper, which is a tater tot beef dinner, super good. We are going to make Parmesan chicken. We are going to make a crock pot shredded Korean beef, which is using a pot roast. Like, don't feel like pot roast has to be made like traditional pot roast. It doesn't have to be potatoes and carrots. Um, did I already say meatloaf? We're making a crock pot meatloaf. And if you don't want to cook it in the crock pot because you think that's creepy, then don't cook it in the crock pot. You do it how you want. You can pop it in the oven. But the instructions are all for crock pot. Now, when you buy this, here's something that I've added the, for the first time to our product. When you download this, you're going to get a set of templates that can be printed on labels. I just use the Avery. What are these? These are... Avery shipping label, and you it prints four on a page. So your recipes, can they see this, Kelsey? Kelsey and Matthew are running the camera. Oh, is it super choppy over there? 
Are they saying anything? Is it real choppy, guys? Can you hear? Is it okay? Matthew, do me a favor. Go upstairs and tell your brother just to get off the internet. Um, you can print these on labels that are cut into four, or the shipping labels are cut in half, and then I just cut it with my scissors here so that each of our things look like this. So that all you have to do is, you don't have to write on your bag. You can print these out, cut it, put it on here, and it tells you exactly, there's a place for the date, so you just fill in the date, and then it tells you exactly what to do when you're thawing it and when you're cooking it in the slow cooker, how to, um, how to throw it, what all needs to go in the slow cooker for how long, you know, high, low, whatever you're gonna do. So you're also gonna get some blank ones so that you can use these for any recipes that you have. Okay, I'm really excited about that. All right, I would love to know, guys, if you can't hear or if it's buffering or if the connection is wonky, please let me know so that we can start over if we need to, hopefully not. Is anyone saying anything? No? Okay, I'm gonna ask Vincent if he is watching. And, okay, perfect. Now we're gonna continue. All right, so here's what you do. When I do my freezer meals, I like to go ahead and get everything out on the counter. Y'all can kind of see this, right? Can they kind of see it? Okay. So I just section everything out, all right? I've got everything I need for the creamy ranch pork chops all right here, including my pork chops that I got today at Costco, everything that I'm gonna need to go with it. I go ahead and I have my bag and I have my label on my bag, okay? And it's ready to go. If you're not using labels and you're writing it out, then just write it out. I also love to use these. These are lifesavers. I love them. I bought a pack of six for like $19 about five years ago. I run them through the dishwasher. They're amazing. It's like an extra pair of pants. So I have those cut out with my bags and I just stick it on my bag like this. Okay. And then it's ready for me to start dumping. Okay. So I have everything right here for my creamy ranch pork chops. And then I have everything right here for my garlic lemon butter chicken. Everything here for the cranberry orange chicken, you get the idea. Some ingredients are used more than once. So I'm gonna start here and my salt and pepper and garlic are gonna move down with me as need be, okay? All right, so again, you're gonna grab this and you can either have it um, on your phone, pulled up on your phone, or you can print it out like I have. You can spiral down, find it like I have. But you wanna have this here so that you know exactly what needs to go in your bags, okay? So you have, it has the recipe, the assembly directions, the cook, and, the cook directions, and then you have the label for when you're thawing and cooking so that you don't have to pull this back out, all right? So I'm gonna start here with um, the pork chops. That's probably very loud. There's a microphone right there. Now I bought, oh yuck. I hate it when that happens. Oh, that was, One complaint about this Costco, they do not wrap their, sour, their cellophane wrap very well. I have bought hamburger meat that wasn't well wrapped. I don't like that. That's very upsetting. Let me wash my hands. All right, so this pack, I've got seven pounds, actually seven and a half pounds of pork chops here. I'm only gonna use half of them for this recipe. And then the other half, I'm going to freeze for a different recipe. Oh, I didn't take that out. Let me bring this over here. And I'm gonna open this up and start putting my pork chops in here. It calls for six pork chops. These are kind of thin. You can do the butterfly thick pork chops or you can do bone-in pork chops, whatever you wanna do. Um, just remember, if you're using a thicker pork chop, you're gonna cook it for a little longer. Um, these are, they're not super thin, um, but they're not super thick either. So I am gonna throw in half, so about three and a half pounds of, I did not put this on here very well, of our um, pork chops in here, okay? Then like I said, the other half, I'm going to use for another recipe for another time. How many are we at? Was that four? I think that is, this is not staying on here very well. All right, so I'm gonna put those in there. Let me wash my hands again real quick. And then I'm gonna get another bag to throw those pork chops into in just a second. Okay. Now let me put this on here right. <laughs> it may just be 
be a little too thick. I'm just gonna leave it like this this time. Okay, so now we're going to add in, we need a can of cream of mushroom and a can of cream of chicken, but I'm gonna use, I have two cream of mushrooms, so that's what I'm gonna use. We're literally just gonna dump it right here in the bag. Hey Matthew, will you do me a favor? Will you bring the trash can over here so that I can easily toss this stuff in? Now, let's say that you have cream of celery in your pantry or some other flavorful cream of something. You could totally use that. I wouldn't use like, I wouldn't use cream of potato because that's going to give chunks of potato in here. Um, but there are other, you know, like I'm doing here, two cream of mushrooms. If all that you have is cream of chicken, that's fine. Um, I think cream of celery would be another great substitution or anything that's like a flavorful base kind of um, cream of soup, okay? All right, and then we're gonna add in, we're gonna add in our garlic. Every great recipe has garlic in it. I don't know if that's on that, but they did, they really did it off. Let's see how it is. Okay, so we're just gonna dump this garlic right in to our bag. I'm gonna leave this out because we're gonna use it for the next recipe. We're going to add in some parsley. So you can either use fresh parsley or dried parsley. I am going to pop the little lid off of here if I can. Otherwise, it's going to take forever to get. Okay, I'm just going to dump in. You could totally use fresh. I'm just going to dump in enough parsley to give a little bit of flavor and some color. And then we're going to do, we, we're not going to do any salt because the cream of soup, which no matter which cream of whatever you're using, that's high in sodium. So we don't need any of that. We're just going to add in pepper. Okay, add in as much as you want. The recipe calls for two teaspoons, but I just eyeball salt all the time. Then we want a packet of ranch seasoning. I buy it in bulk at Sam's. I spend about $6 on this and it will last me more than a year. So one packet, when you buy a packet of the seasoning at the grocery store, you generally get about two teaspoons in your little packet. So we're going to measure in about that much and dump it in here. I've got a half a teaspoon here, so I need one, two, three, two and six. <laughs> I'm going to add a little more because I want it super rangy. I like the flavor of the ranch uh, dressing and actually we're going to have to use this again in a different recipe. Okay, and I think that's it. Pork chops, cream of soup, dry ranch seasoning, garlic, parsley, pepper. That's it. So we're literally just going to, I like to fold it over to get all the air out. Do the top. Remember it's got the label on the front. And then I like to just squish it down just like that. And when we go to defrost, so I'm going to stick it in the freezer just like this, and it'll go in flat. When we go to defrost it, we'll make sure that we get all, you can sit here and kind of massage all this and rub to get all of your stuff all over your meat. It's not necessary. When it's defrosting, all of this is going to defrost in your refrigerator overnight or what have you, and all of this is going to come together. And you'll make sure before you dump it into your slow cooker that your meat is thoroughly covered. So. There's that. I'm going to stick it in the fridge for now. Super easy. And I'm actually going to get another bag here and bag up the rest of these pork chops. These pork chops are great for grilling, for baking, for slow cooker, for whatever. And I like that it's just like a little bit of bone in, not a whole lot of bone. I don't want kids to have to deal with the bone. And you can rinse these off if you want to before you bag them up. Do you rinse your meat, Kelsey? I rinse my chicken. I used to until I read that it was better to Yeah, the germs. That's yeah. true. That can happen for sure. Yeah, that can definitely happen. I do like to wash my chicken if I'm getting... Um, fresh chicken breast or chicken thighs. I wash it. I don't wash it if I'm using the frozen stuff. Wash my hands. 
and then I'm just going to set this, these pork chops, um, in the fridge until I can figure out what I want to do with them. If I just want to freeze them as they are, or if I want to um, convert them to an actual freezer milk. I'm going to decide that later. But I bought the large pack at Costco because it is cheaper per unit to buy in bulk for me and my family, and we will eat it. It will get eaten. All right. Next. Next is the garlic lemon butter chicken, which is super delicious as well. I've made different variations of this over the years. This is on page four in here, and we already have our little label on here. I'm just going to open this up. Um, this does call for chicken breast. If you don't have chicken breast on hand, that's okay. You can use thighs, you can use um, tenderloins, you can use whatever you want to use. Um, I am going to use the breast, and I'm using frozen. I thought, you guys know that I really, I've gone back and forth. I've gone through many seasons of buying large things of frozen chicken. And I've also gone through a long season of wanting to always buy it fresh, like at Sam's where it's not been frozen. I mean, it has been frozen in transport, but where I'm buying it and it's not in a frozen bag like this. But right now, we just kind of are taking what we can find when we're at Costco or Sam's or wherever you're buying the groceries from. Now, these are ginormous breasts. Um, this recipe calls for five large, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'm actually, um, these are really huge. I'm probably only going to put four in here. What's the Tell me what the comment is, Kelsey. There, no or very low carb. I don't know why. I'm struggling with these. I typically don't struggle with them. I think all of my meats are just too big. So she needs low carb or no carb. Okay. I'm only going to do four breasts because these are huge. Um, have you done, have you done, Whole 30. Whole 30 is not a lot of carbs, right? Whole 30 is um, clean eating sweet potatoes, and now potatoes are on their approved list. But it's no pasta, none of that. Have you tried Whole 30? I have two different Whole 30 cookbooks over on getdinneronthetable.net. One is a Whole 30 Instant Pot cookbook, and one is a Whole 30 Slow Cooker cookbook. And there are some very good ones. There's no flavor compromise, super, super good. I would go with something like that. Um, and you know, Whole30, the idea is that you're doing it for 30 days, but you can continue. People do Whole30 recipes every day for a lifestyle change um, long term. So I would look into that. Otherwise, honestly, um, I'm going to go back to my freezer out in the garage. Honestly, I don't have any products in the store that are labeled as low carb or anything like that, um, low carb, low calorie or anything. However, those Whole30 things would work. Have you tried that? I would love to know if you've ever tried it. All right, so now we're going to add, we're going to put a whole stick of butter in here. And yes, this butter will kind of freeze in here and then it will fall very well. I don't know why. Is this some broken maybe? Butter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put olive oil. You can do anything. I think some of these may be broken. But also, it looks like my bags are just super full and it's not wanting to hold them. Maybe it's time to buy a new bag holder. I have never, ever had this kind of issue with my bag holders. You go sit over there. <laughs> You are in so much trouble. Okay, so let me also add, we're gonna do Italian seasoning. I buy a lot of my seasonings in, um, in bulk, and I do that at Sam's or sometimes at Costco. I tend to really buy a lot of my bulk uh, seasonings at Sam's. We're doing, how much are we doing here? Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. I like to eyeball things. You do it your way, I'll do it. Just measure if you want to, or don't if you don't want to. Um, okay, we also want to add some onion in here. I went ahead and sliced or diced up some onion earlier. I'm going to add a couple of handfuls. Of, this was a huge onion. I'm going to add about that much. Honestly, the recipe says sliced. 
you can use diced too. You guys know that I really love buying the dehydrated onions that come in a big container like this. Um, for the purpose of this, I bought a huge bag of fresh onions and we're just chopping up and using them. Um, you can slice them or dice them, either way. It's not going to change the flavor. Everything's going to taste the same. I'm going to open this up next to the bowl here. Okay, then we're going to add in a little bit of salt because we don't have anything else salty going in here. So it, the recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt. I just kind of, I know how salty or unsalty I want my stuff to be. And then paprika, I do not have paprika in a large quantity. I've just got this little thing. We're going to do a teaspoon of paprika. Do more if you want. You do you. Put in how much you want. And then we do want, the recipe calls for red crushed pepper. If you have little kids that are sensitive to stuff like this, skip it. The recipe calls for two tablespoons of crushed red pepper. I'm not putting that much in here. That's too much for my little kids. But I'll give it a little shake. That's enough. When I make spaghetti, I put in a couple of shakes of this and it gives really good flavor. Okay, then we're going to do our lemon and we're also going to do lemon zest. So, we're going to do the juice of two large lemons and then we want about three tablespoons of lemon zest. So, did you know, I'm washing my lemons so that I can use the zest, but did you know if you will take your lemon and just kind of roll it on your counter, do you do this, Kelsey? Yeah. This really helps to get all the juice out. Growing up, my dad loved lemons. He would just sit and eat them. He loved them. I like lemon stuff, but it's very tart, and I love lemon in my water. Um, he would always roll the lemons just like this. All right, so we've got our chicken breast, our onion. Oh, we didn't put our garlic in. We need to make sure we put garlic in. You can do fresh garlic. <laughs> garlic is so good. It gives great flavor. The recipe only calls for about four tablespoons of minced garlic. That's probably about what that was. All right. That's a lot, I know. I had a knife over here. All right. I'm going to cut this, these lemons in half. Calls for two large lemons. You could also just use lemon juice if you have that in your pantry. Um, but we do, this also calls for the zest, and I did want to make sure I got zest. So I'm going to, the butter and the lemon together are really good. And then it's very basic um, spices that are in here, and it's going to be super, super good. The tartness of the lemon and that little bit of crushed red pepper are going to really be yummy together. But again, you don't want to go overboard if you have little ones. You don't want this to get too spicy for them. So what would I serve this with? I would cook this in the slow cooker, or if you wanted, you could cook it on the grill or in the oven, but I'm going to cook it in the slow cooker. And um, I will probably serve this with some rice on the side and a salad or mashed potatoes on the side instead of rice, and then a vegetable. We've got some, I bought a big bag of frozen green beans today at Costco. Um, last month I bought a big thing of, is it Normandy? Frozen vegetables, which has your carrots, your cauliflower, your broccoli. What else is in there? Like a nice little mixture. Um, I've really been stocking up on my frozen vegetables. Um, just because I'm running out of pantry room, I do have canned um, vegetables as well. But Okay, now that we have all of that done, I'm going to take my microplane, and it says three tablespoons. You know the zest is where a lot of the flavor is at um, for your, from your lemon. So we're going to, I don't know that we're going to get three tablespoons out of all this, but we'll do our best. You, don't, you just want to do it until you get to the white. You don't want that white. Um, you're just doing the outer flesh. You're not doing the inside skin because that's a little more bitter. So you just want to make sure that you're turning your lemon. And if you wanted to do the zest before you squeeze them, you can totally do that too. I just did it backwards. Because that, that's what you can count on me for. I take the longest route. <laughs> But it's going to kind of get caught up on the back of your microplane. You'll just wipe it off and get it down into your bag. Um, all right. Do a little bit more. Any other 
question, Kelsey? <clears throat> you been Amy Lane I haven't seen you in a while are you getting ready for another um, cruise you're always going on cruises and I know that one of your boys just graduated from high school so that's super awesome have you guys started your school year um, we are waiting you know we homeschool we're waiting until September to technically start after our Labor Day start our next school year Kelsey your kiddos started last week right and y'all are doing the distance learning for nine weeks? Mm -hmm. And you're liking it okay? I yeah. Like that. That's so sweet. I love hearing that. I love that. They be yeah, they want to be there hanging out with their friends. It's been a long, I mean, I feel like all of 2020, everybody's been home. Yeah. Even though it's only since March, but only. That's a long time. That's a very long time. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for the zesting. I'm going to, this bag is super full. I'm going to get it sealed up. And as these chicken breasts defrost, they won't take up as much room in the bag, but we want them to stay frozen right now. So there we go. Everything's on here. Add your date to your little box here that says date. For me, none of this food is going to last like, by October, all of this food will be gone. You can freeze any of this stuff for three to six months, three months or so in your indoor freezer. And then if you have like an upright or a chest freezer, you can store stuff in there for six months, sometimes even a year. Um, if it still looks okay and it's not freezer burnt, you're fine. You can use it. All right, I'm going to stick this in the fridge for now. If I have some room. meal that we're going to do is our cranberry orange chicken. This is so good. This is a really unique collection of different ingredients. I think you guys are going to be like, whoa, that is, I would have never thought to put all of those flavors together. It is super good. Okay, so we're actually using thighs for this, and I'm going to go back and try these again. Are you guys ready to play well? Well, I'm hoping that these thighs are smaller than the breast and smaller than the pork chops, so all of that was pretty big and bulky. I've already got my label on here. All right. I'm going to put this on here just like this. And remember, if you want, you can just keep, as long as you're going to eat this food within the next three to five days, you can just make up however many you want and leave them in your fridge and let them start defrosting and make them over the next three days or whatever. You don't have to put them in the freezer. And you can also just make them as you go if you don't want to do freezer milk. Okay, so I did buy a bag of frozen chicken thighs. And the recipe calls for six to eight boneless, skinless chicken thighs. That is really big. These kind of look very, I got these at Walmart. Um, they look very frozen. I know, but you know what? Um, Sam's has been very, very limited on what is available right now. Oh, really? I don't mind buying, I like buying my um, chicken breast and chicken thighs in there. I'm very picky about my ground beef. I usually only buy ground beef at HEV or in the Dallas Fort Worth area, I would go to Sam's or Kroger. Um, but I did give Costco a try. I'm buying about seven pounds of their ground beef and it looks good. I bought last week, I got one of their roasts and it turned out really great. So, and at Easter, we got one of their roasts. So, I think their beef is going to be fine. I'm just really picky about my beef. Okay, so for this, we are going to do. Stick with me, guys. This is going to get a can of cranberries. I love cranberries, too. So you're going to put a can of this in here. Open this up. If you had fresh cranberries, I think 
suppose you could do those. However, remember, crushed cranberries are going to be tart because they don't, the jelly ones have, um, they have been cooked with some sugar. So fresh ones may be a little bit tart. But I suppose you could use one. Yes. I think your dad made those. Maybe it was yours, but yeah, they were tart. All right, so I'm just going to kind of cut this up in here. Okay. And then we need a cup of Catalina dressing. This is all very interesting. It's going to be good. Chelsea's going to be Open our Catalina. I hate it when there's like multiple layers of different things I have to take off to open something. So, Catalina dressing. I, I love Catalina dressing on taco salad and in this. Yeah. All right. So, there's that. Catalina is essentially, it's tomato based with different. Um, Spices. Have you ever had Catalina Yeah. It's really good on taco salad. It really is. Okay. So we're getting all of that out of there. Now hold that there. And then we're going to do a cup of orange marmalade. I know you think it's crazy, but I'm looking at me. So I have a niece over here who's almost 14. You think this sounds horrible? I just ruined cranberries. This is going to be good. I promise you, Kelsey has the most disgusted look on her face. So, so this is sweet orange marmalade. It's not. This is 10 ounces. I need a cup. So I'm going to use almost this whole thing. It smells pretty good. I'm here to tell you. Are you freaked out? Uh-huh. So eight ounces would be a cup. They do not like what I'm cooking over here. Kelsey just said a minute ago, I'm going to have to come over the night you make this, but I think she's taking that back. We'll have this before you go home. Are you excited? Okay, so that was about a cup that just came out of here. All right, and then we're going to do, y'all are going to freak out, a box of onion, <laughs> a box of onion soup mix. <laughs> this is going to be good. It's a lot of good flavors, Kelsey. You do what? Food should mix. This is going to be great flavor. I'm telling you guys, I'm making this tomorrow night for dinner. You're going to love it. It's going to be good. Okay, then we're going to add some garlic to our sweet marmalade. Okay, so just drop in the garlic. Alrighty. And then some salt and pepper. So I'm going to put in, remember that Lipton soup mix probably has a decent amount of salt in it already. And then we're going to put pepper in. Amy Lynn says hello. Who else said hello? Amy Lynn, I have really missed Amy you. Lynn. Amy Lynn, Amy Lane, sorry, Kelsey Lynn. <laughs> Amy Lane, I have really seriously missed you. Okay, that's it for this one. Amy Lane wants help with uh, low-carb milk. Lenny, you're like 30 minutes late. Oh, I know. Okay, that's great. <laughs> throwing it out there. You're just throwing it out there. <laughs> right? You should see this setup over here. Kelsey's got her feet kicked up. Lenny's got all kinds of crazy. This, he's not running this off of a phone. He is running this off of, look at all these flavors. Doesn't that look so good? Oh, it's going to all mix up, and it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. You're going to be like, you're going to go home to your mom and say, that was the most amazing food I've ever had in my life. She's looking at me like this. You don't think so? Okay, let me put this in the fridge. It's going to be good. Trust me, it's going to be good. All right. So there is that. Just don't, I do want to make sure that my bag is open. Okay. So now, our next recipe, wasn't that so awesome? Okay. Our next recipe is, I'm going to save all the beef ones for last, slow cooker parmesan. That's what we're going to do next, and then that wraps up our chicken, okay? I know I told you guys that there's a lot of variety of meats, and I'm going to keep my word, okay? All right, so there's that. Remember, we've got our label because now 
our cookbooks come with labels for, if it's a freezer mill cookbook, it's going to come with labels for you. All right, and let me find the recipe that is uh, slow cooker chicken parmesan. Remember, guys, we're cooking all of these. We're doing seven recipes out of this 30 crock pot freezer mill on a budget, and it's using ingredients that you likely already have on hand, and you can get it at getdinnerontheTable.net, and it comes with your freezer labels as well. Um, as well as some blank freezer labels, but your freezer label is already printed out for each recipe so that you know how to um, cook it when it comes time to cook it. Okay, so this, we're going back to our chicken breast over here, and we're going to throw in, I'm pretty sure I'm only going to be able to fit about four of them in here, which will be fine for our family, because chicken breast this size, typically about two to three people can eat off of one chicken breast. All right, there's two. These are huge. Like, what kind of chickens do these come off of? Ostrich, <laughs> ostrich chickens. These are from ostriches. Okay, there's that. Please stay on here. All right, I'm pretty sure I am done with the chicken. Do you wanna go put this back in the freezer? Outside? So you want the cranberry, orange, Catalina. <laughs> it's all mixed up together now. Cranberry, all mixed up in one thing. I'm telling you, those flavors are going to be amazing. You don't think so? You don't believe me? All right, so this is really easy. This gets a cup or a can of crushed tomatoes, a can of tomato sauce, and then a small can of tomato paste, but this is all that Walmart had when they fulfilled my order. We're going to dump all of that in here. Guys, remember, anytime you cook chicken, especially in the slow cooker, and it has a tomato-based uh, sauce to it like this, like what we're doing here, there is something just so amazing that happens with chicken and with the tomato where it makes it so tender. It's like it falls apart. It is delicious. And if you have husbands that say, um, I don't like slow cooker meals because it, it makes, you know, meat that dries out, this stuff is not going to dry out. If you have meat that's drying out when you use your slow cooker, you have a problem with not using the right size slow cooker or your cook time is off. So not using the right size slow cooker means that, so say you use a slow cooker that's like a seven quart and you're only cooking for three people and you needed a four quart, then you're going to have this huge crock pot that's only filled up about this full and it's going to cook super fast, right? and it's gonna overcook and it's gonna dry out. And if you don't have it covered enough with enough liquid, it's going to cook, uh, it's gonna dry out as well. So using the right size slow cooker and cooking for the right amount of time, so the right size slow cooker also equals liquid levels being right, and then cooking it for the right amount of time. That's where we have the issue where we have food that is dried out um, or food that, you know, usually it's husbands or kids that are complaining that it's dry or what have you, and that's where your problem usually is. Okay, so for this, we're gonna add these three cans, and actually, for the tomato paste, I'm only gonna add half of that. And then we're gonna do garlic and some seasonings, and that's it, and it's gonna go in the freezer, and then the day of, we will add, our note on here says that we will add our um, cheese once this has, you're not, you're not going to freeze it with the cheese uh, mixed in with this sauce. So we will add our Parmesan and mozzarella cheese the day of, what, towards the end of cooking. It'll cook all day in the slow cooker and then about 30 minutes before, you'll put your cheeses on top and it'll make a nice melted layer on top of your chicken. It'll be yummy and then you'll serve it up over noodles. All right, so that was a can of crushed tomatoes. And then we're gonna add a can of tomato sauce. And then we're going to add the um, tomato paste. This one's too big, we're gonna do about half of it. And then I'm gonna freeze the other half in a small Ziploc freezer bag. What are you talking about? More people are telling me that you don't have brown hair. 
So Liberty will be 14 next month. No, yeah, in less than a month, about three weeks from now, she will be 14. And I just mentioned briefly the other day, yesterday, I just said that she had brown hair because I think she has brown hair. She's a blonde. I thought she had brown hair. So she put on Instagram a poll asking her friends if she has brown hair or blonde hair. Not one single person has said brown hair. Not one. Not a single person. We should get you on camera and let these people. No, she says no. Lenny, do you think she has brown hair or blonde hair? Blonde. And Kelsey says blonde. Not one person in this world agrees with me. Not one. I don't understand how this happens. All right, we're going to add in some garlic. My bag is falling over. Okay, and then we're going to add in some Italian seasoning, which we need about three tablespoons. I know. These bag holders, I don't know what has happened, but they are not cooperating. That can't be it. I don't know what the problem is, but I'm annoyed. We want about three tablespoons. No, I don't do that. And then we're going to do some salt and pepper. What are you doing? You want yogurt? Eat it at the table. Get you a spoon out of the dishwasher and eat it at the table. Huh? There's not any in here. Here. Only kids spoons. Take it to the table. The table is that way. All right, we're going to do pepper, and then we are going to do salt. We want to make sure that our tomato sauce is very well seasoned so that Italian seasoning, the garlic, and the salt and pepper are going to do that. All right, we're going to add some salt. Calls for a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of pepper. But I like very well salted tomato sauce. Okay, there we go. That is it. So what are we at? Four meals? You want to get all the air out? There you go. This is another freezer meal. No, we are not at seven. So now we have all the beef. We're making a beef casserole that has tater tots in it. We're making a beef brisket that's going to be super yummy, and then a beef uh, meatloaf. It's going to be easy. You stick this in here. Now would you like to pull the trash? 
No. Pull it where? Pull it out. I'm gonna. I need to save that onion for a different recipe. So I'm gonna take this onion here, and I'm gonna cut it up. Can you hear those people over there being loud? What are y'all doing? Oh, you're filming for your YouTube channel. Okay. So Kelsey has a YouTube channel. It is Kelsey Lynn. Thousands and thousands of people are on it. Earlier, her, earlier, her 14 year old brother said, You only have 2,000 followers. He's so rude. She's like, I have 3,100 and what subscribers? <laughs> okay, you when go. you say that, could you picture them all in this room? That's a lot. And Amy you know? Lane is one of your followers. Is she? Mm -hmm. She's talked about it before. Oh, I know, I love her too. She's been, she just moved well. or something? No, I don't think so, but her boy. I'm taking half of a large onion, sliced up, sliced, and I'm dropping it in here with this. One of her boys graduated from high school uh, at the end of, of all the, at the end of the school year. And she's probably getting ready to go on another cruise. She goes on lots of cruises. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is Half a cup of soy sauce, which I'm going to rinse out this that had our Catalina dressing in it. Okay. We're going to do half a cup of soy. I think this is going to be super good. Does this sound like something you would like to eat, Liberty? Maybe. You don't know. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. All right. We are doing our freezer meals, guys. And then we need one cup of brown sugar. Here's my brown sugar. I don't know if this is going to fit in here. It's not going to fit very well. I hate to put my hand in here. Oh, shit, I got to put my other cup. Help me dirty another spoon and dish out my brown sugar. You think that's cute? I don't think so. Brown sugar going in. Brown sugar going in. You should have heard him, guys. Just an hour ago, he was so frustrated with me. Do I have a witness? Yes. yes. Oh, Can, we get along? Church. Can we please just get along? Like, I can't help but that your camera and sound is giving you issues. Oh, my word. He is something else. And this is my new match. I cannot deal with him. Okay. Then we're going to add in pepper. Tonight we have one of the Halo guys joining us for dinner. You think he's funny, Liberty? Liberty's like, no. He's wearing, yeah, the bright highlighter t-shirt. Okay, we got pepper in there. We're going to do a fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. Again, if you have kids that are sensitive to spicy stuff, just a, a few shakes. That's all you need, and it will not be too hot for them to enjoy. We're not adding any... We're not adding any salt because our soy sauce is basically salt. Um, so we have our roast, our onion, our brown sugar. Did we add garlic? I don't think we did. We gotta add our garlic. And then we're gonna add some beef broth. And that's it. Let's see here. We need half a cup of beef broth. So here is what I do for broth. Where did I put my broth? It's right here. I have been buying, so you guys know that I buy powdered broth, and then you just add water. I've also been giving this a try because it's at Costco, and it's better than bouillon, and you do the same thing. You just add water to however much, so I forget what it says on here. Honestly, I just eyeball it or whatever. Yeah, and I'm using... Make sure salt-free. None of this stuff is salt-free, but it's organic. It is reduced sodium. <laughs> Well, what happens is that you put that together, it's all salty. You don't say. I know how this I mean, thing works. Eat. Lenny, I know. I know how this works. I know that certain things cause things to be more salty. Yeah. This soy sauce was only half a cup. We're going to be fine. And we'll pretend it's low-sodium soy sauce, okay? All right, so we're just going to do half a cup. If you don't want to do 
do the broth, do water. But we just need half a cup, okay? All right. So we're doing. So I'm actually just going to do half a cup of water. And then I will put my, since I'm doing this, I will just drop this right in here. We're going to use a kid's spoon. I'm just going to do that much. And it'll mix with the water. If you want to be uh, more precise about it, use a whisk and whisk it up together to make your broth. We're just needing half a cup of broth. I poured, I poured my water in there. And that's it. Okay? So this is now done. Easy, right? Super easy. Sounds good. Sounds different. It's not just boring. Don't you agree? Very calming. Super unique. <laughs> Liberty's like, no. Liberty's like, I can't wait to go home. Okay. I'm putting that back in the freezer. And we will have that one night soon. Okay. Two more recipes left. One is crock pot meatloaf, and one is hearty cowboy supper, which has the tater tots. That's going to be cooked in a 9 by 13 so I will put foil on top. You can use disposable uh, baking dishes, but honestly, I have about five 9 by 13s that are glass. I just use those, and then this foil will go on top before it goes in the freezer, and I stuck my label on here. Uh-uh. No, I don't have issues with freezer burn. Nope. Yeah, if you leave it in there for... I think I have one of your pants, and I think maybe you have one of my pants. Me. Me. Okay, for this, I need my ground beef. You are so rude. I need my ground beef browned. Would you like to come and cook my ground beef in the 9 by 13 skillet? She doesn't want to do that. You do not have yeah, to do she, it. She no, she's not. No, she was You'll do it? Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Let me get. What is that mine? Okay. Mom. All right. Did someone say mom? Yeah. Oh. You unplug your Xbox? Did I pause your Xbox? Yeah, did you unplug it? It automatically unpauses. Okay, I think that Matthew was trying to show me something new on the Disney Circle. Uh -huh. If you can find my phone, you can go in. I think he may have, that may have been an accident. I'm sorry. Wait, do you mean that you weren't You were not supposed to have a pot. It's been paused for the past hour. I'm very sorry. You can have an extra hour of time. Disney Circle last week, and we're still learning all the ins and outs of it, but it allows us to turn off the internet for each device. So when you don't get your stuff done, we are going to turn off your internet. All right, I am going to, for this casserole, this tater tot hamburger casserole, we need a pound and a half of ground beef. So we are going to come over here. I'm going to go with olive oil. Anytime I'm cooking ground beef, I'm in the middle of a Facebook Live loop. Anytime I'm cooking ground beef, I do olive oil, and then I do onion. And then I do garlic. And then we're going to add, once this gets, once this starts to cook down, we're going to add one red bell pepper to it. Let me get you the beef. It's in the fridge. Is that what you're going to wear for Halloween? Oh, I need a halo manual. Come in here. Show everybody your halo costume. So my kids have been Halo guys for Halloween.
we bought their costumes kind of big and then they've just worn them over and over and over again and we invested in these extensive helmets um, on like the second year and they love them and then as they got grown them they've been able to also hand them down so is this what you're going to be this year you're the blue halo guy that's awesome matthew you look fantastic because it is a little bloody. Okay, I'm going to pull out about, I'm going to do two pounds of hamburger. It is not best to like do this across the kitchen like this, but we're going to make do. And then the rest of it will be used for the meatloaf. Okay, if you want to use that and just kind of chop it up like we did that ground sausage that time, can you do me a favor? Show her hair? Okay, we will. Guys, is she a blonde or is she light brown hair? I say light brown hair, but she does have blonde highlights. Anyway, okay. Uh, Lenny, will you give me a big bowl so that I, my hands are dirty? I need to put this that I'm going to use for meatloaf into a big bowl. A big, big, big bowl. A big bowl. That right. smells so good. So that is going to be our tater tot casserole, which is also known as. The one that yellow one? Or? I need like that big white one on the bottom, but please, or actually that yellow one back there in the back. Squat. Oh, okay. Back left corner. She is cooking up the, she's cutting the hamburger meat for the hearty cowboy supper that's in our 30 crock pot freezer meal recipes on a budget. Downloadable cookbook that's over at getdinneronthetable.net. Okay, we are going to do. All of that? Yeah. I need to make a pretty big meatloaf. I think that's enough for a meatloaf. You keep going. I'll add the rest of this to what she's making over there. Okay, good. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Are we going to eat that today? That one? I'll eat it tomorrow. Which one are we? Today we are having the chicken. The chicken fajitas that are in the slow cooker. These right here? Yep. It's been cooking all day. Have the weird one on Tuesday. You want to come back over on Tuesday? Okay. Have the weird one on Tuesday. We're going to have the cranberry orange. Catalina, onion, cranberries, cranberries, orange marmalade. No, there was garlic. It was cranberries, orange marmalade, a packet of onion soup mix, dry, Catalina dressing, chicken. I think it's going to be good. Okay. Now, while she's doing that, I'm going to assemble the um, crock pot meatloaf over here, okay? Let me find my recipe in here. Alrighty, so it calls for about two pounds of ground beef. This is probably closer to three pounds, but that's okay. Alright, I am going to do the rest of this onion that's in here. And then... Honestly, I probably should have used the dehydrated onions in this because my kids that don't like onions, they tend to find it in the meatloaf if it's not super small. But we're going to have to just do, what we've, do it with what we have here. I'm just going to chop it really small, a little bit more. What are y'all doing? Okay. All right, I'm putting that in here. We want our onion. And then we're going to add in um, some garlic. Hey, Leonard, can you give me two eggs? <laughs> a long favorite. She's in the Apple Watch thing. Oh, yeah? And this is everything that you bought that were in the watch. It's not mm -hmm. a watch, really. It's a, uh, 
the Italian seasoning. We're going to do three tablespoons of Italian seasoning in here. One, two, three, uh, two eggs. Dos huevos. Dos. Dos eggs. We're going to add some salt and pepper. Where's my lid for my brown sugar? I really don't want to get any Italian seasoning in there. Are you finished with the brown sugar? I am. Remind them, you were just being super good. Okay, good. Salt and pepper. And we need... Can you give me the other eggs? These are very expired. How do eggs expire? They do. Yeah, Believe me, eggs. eggs know that they're expiring. They know. They and have Debbie's Worcestershire sauce. Uh, breadcrumbs. Where's my breadcrumbs? I know I just saw them here. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Alright, how much breadcrumb do we need? We need a cup. So, I measured the brown sugar in this. Go. This actually might make enough for two meatloaves since I added so much more beef. Okay, um, and then I need the okay. two eggs. Two eggs in here? Yeah. You're going to do the oh, stirring sorry. or you want me to stir? How do you want to stir? Yeah, we don't want a surprise diamond ring. Well, or... I don't like the feeling. The I love Lucy. All right, I got to get the Worcestershire sauce. How do you say Worcestershire sauce? You said it. Worcestershire. All right, we need two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. How do you say it, Kelsey? Worcestershire. You're the Worcestershire at saying words. Now, you could freeze this in your glass or metal meatloaf pan and then just put foil on top. That's what I really should have done, but I already stuck my label on that bag. So I may just try to get that label off of there because I would really prefer to, prefer. to store it in a uh, meatloaf prefer. pan. Prefer. 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 You know what I need in here? I need some tomato sauce. Can you get me, actually, if you will just get me the ketchup, it calls for half a cup of tomato sauce, but I'm just going to use ketchup. And then ketchup? you put ketchup on top. Would you like me to cook it for you, too? I would. Can you go get me the uh, ketchup? Yeah. You may have to look, ketchup? Yeah, you may have to look in the pantry. Like yeah, I need like a cup. You need a whole cup of ketchup? Yeah. Or you could get me a jar of tomato sauce, or you could take this leftover tomato paste and water it down and whisk it up and then put it in here. You got options. That's a good idea. It won't go away. And I'm not a fan of ketchup. All right. Take that. Take that tomato paste. Take that. And you need a cup of that. So just all I have to pour do that is into water. a bowl. Okay. You're, you can do that. I would stir it up with a whisk, but whatever. Okay. I'll stir it with a whisk. Is it whisk or whisk? Whisk. Okay. Whisk. whisk. Mask. All right. I say that, mask. Because I feel like every time I say the word mask, I keep going on. It's like this word that just keeps going on and on. Okay. We've got our meat. It's really well combined, and then we're going to pour in, you can either do half a cup of tomato sauce, oh, I like this. or you can use ketchup, or you can use the leftover paste from the tomato paste that we had. Um, and then so you do want a cup of ketchup on top before you mix it, okay? Now, one of my favorite, easiest meatloafs to make is you buy pesto sauce. I like to get it at Sam's or at Costco in bulk. And you 
add a little bit of onion, a little bit of mozzarella cheese, and then your pesto sauce. Stir it all up. It was so good. It makes the best meatloaf on the planet. It looks so good. Okay, pour that in here. Mm. So see how we didn't let that taste go to waste? We didn't let oh. that taste go to waste. I like that. All right. Tasty wasty. No, 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 no. Don't add any more water to this. Do not. Okay, I don't want any more water added in here. It'll go down, won't it? Okay. Okay. Oh, you're fine. Yep, we don't have to use the last little one next. Fine, come on. Okay. okay, but here's what I do need for you to do next. Reach down here and get me my pan. That's my crop or my uh -huh. pan. I'm gonna. I am going to. This one. The uh -huh. last one. Yep. I am going to freeze this in this dish. Now you can form it into a shape and freeze it. This looks disgusting. And freeze it in a Ziploc bag. Um. Here are your options when you go to cook it. If you want to cook it in the slow cooker and you and you froze it in the Ziploc bag, then just make sure when it defro when you put it in that bag that you put it into the shape of a loaf, okay? And then you can just take that loaf and put it right into your slow cooker, all right? Perfect. Or you can freeze it in this glass in your glass muffin or your glass uh, loaf pan. And then you can cook this loaf pan inside of your slow cooker. Did you know that? Yes, your slow cooker is just like a heating, it's, it's just heating, it's like an okay. oven. Right, okay? Or you can pop this in your traditional oven. But here's the deal, if you cook this in your oven, in your house, it's going to make your house hot. I hate doing that in the summertime. So just, you can cook it in the barbecue pit if you wanted to. Okay, so I added too much meat in here, and I've got enough meat for two meatloafs. So Mr. Lopez, you're going to need to come over here and give me another pan. Don't cry about it. I spent a lot of time preparing. Okay. I didn't have... What do you want? Down here. Down there. Find another pan that looks like that. It may be... You can grab that metal one that's over there. This one? Mm -hmm. That bread pan looks like this? Yep. Yeah. And will you move that? Okay, there you go. So I made enough for two meatloaves. You could do that to the kids, right? Sure. So you can go ahead and put ketchup on top of it or wait and do that before you cook it. But there you go. That's how we're going to freeze it. Okay? Do you want to show them? Do you want to hold them up and show them? So yeah, it really is one and a half. One whole meatloaf and then half of the meatloaf. And again, you can make it into a loaf shape and put it in your Ziploc bag and then put it in that loaf shape into your slow cooker when it is time to cook it. Or you can take your glass pan or your metal pan and set it down inside your slow cooker and cook it just like that in your slow cooker if you really want it to keep that shape or do a better job of keeping that shape. Or you can cook it in your oven. Or you can cook it inside your barbecue grill. <laughs> Any other ideas? Or just whatever you want. Or you can buy a solar oven and cook it outside. And a solar oven. Off the bus. I really want a solar oven. I want one. They're like 400 bucks. I told her I can make her it. Her camera I has can. one. It is so cool. It is really cool. I would make a fancy one. Okay. So show them what you're doing there. Now, I just had it more of that pace. Okay. She's almost done with our hamburger meat that's been cooking in olive oil, garlic, and onion. And I just added. She hates one of the things. You know her name is Liberty, right? So I say, Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. You know that commercial? She hates it. She, she, gets, she might hurt her teeth. She hears it all the time. Yeah. Just a few times, but it's a, you know what? I can't help it. I can't help it. I say liberty and I just start humming and you know, I'm looking at her like, Alright. Don't so want to get in trouble. Is... Ma'am, is there anything else? I'm so hungry I can Okay, 
yes, there is something else you and Kelsey could do, or you or Kelsey. Kelsey. Start, um, <laughs> start Kelsey. using the griddle, griddle. and these are our tortillas. Tortillas. So Sam's and Costco. Sam sells one brand. Costco sells another brand. These are the ones that Costco sells. I've been buying them and freezing them. So these are defrosted. I would start with these because they're smaller the for the kids. And then there's 22 in here and there's however many in there. Do so you want me to make them all? I would make at least half of these because we're having crock pot fajitas for dinner. Um, so. Yeah, 
she's about to start singing Liberty, Liberty. Right? Uh, how can you keep it in your head? Okay, so the directions here tell you to assemble everything and put it into a bag, and then you'll assemble it later into your casserole. I'm going to do it all right now, okay? Um, because I'm probably going to end up sticking this in the oven is basically what's going to have to happen now. Because So if you follow the instructions here, you're going to be able to cook it in a slow cooker, um, which is you're going to assemble your beef mixture and then this mixture here that we're going to make with corn, cream of mushroom, and rotel, and some sour cream. You'll mix all that together, put it into a bag, and freeze it, and then you will add your tater tots later. Um, and you'll do all of that together when you're putting it into the slow cooker and then top it with cheese. I'm going to turn this into an oven meal because that's what I want to do. I'm going to use a 9 by 13 to do that. Um, but if you follow the, the directions that are here, you're going to do it in the slow cooker and it tells you how to properly assemble it. So we're just kind of going off course a little bit here. Okay. All right. So what I have is the can of corn. And then we're going to add in a can of cream of mushroom. I'm going to use one of my dirty spoons. I'll rinse it off. Add the cream of mushroom. Lenny, are there any questions? George, we're going to open a can of Rotel. Hello. Let me tell her everything that we've made. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. He doesn't pay attention. I know there's something about a cowboy. <laughs> I'm actually going to drain this out of here. We have made garlic, butter, lemon, chicken, breast. We have made a Korean uh, Korean beef uh, roast beer, or a pot roast. Um, we made a Catalina orange marmalade cranberry concoction that I can all agree that this sounds good. Oh, I can't wait to eat it. Um, we're gonna add some sour cream to this as well. Gonna drain that juice out of there. Um, we made uh, meatloaf. You're fine. We're gonna do. I believe it's a cup in here. Mm, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Um, half a cup of sour cream. We did. What else did we do? I feel like we've been we've done a lot. <laughs> Uh, I'll go back over the list with you guys in just a minute. We did a chicken parmesan. We did chicken thighs. I'll have to just look at the list and tell you all of the things again. They were super, super good. Okay, so we've got cream of mushroom, a can of corn, a can of rotel that is drained, and then I just added sour cream. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to add in... Dump it into this mixture here. Do you think you can do that? Or if you want to hold it, if you will take that come on over here, I don't know that I'll need. Will you use it to kind of scoop, to kind of push this into the, yeah, there we go. Very good. So we're going to add our beef in here. Okay. We're going to stir this all up. We used our meat. Masher, meat chopper, which this one's Pampered Chef, but you can get them on Amazon all day long. Rubbermaid makes one, lots of different brands make them. But it really helps to get your beef chopped up super, super crumbly, which is how I like my ground beef. You did a really good job over here. You got it chopped up very, very small. I like it like that. Okay, so we're mixing our beef into this. Do 
you have two middle names? You're like Luke Henry. Clarity is her mother's maiden name. We turn that light on over there. It's right behind you. It's the first switch. I feel like it's probably getting super dark in here on the camera. Okay, so now we're going to dump this in here. And actually, I think I'm going to get... No, I think you'll be fine. I'm going to pour this in here. This is actually... I'm going to turn this into two... You know what you could also add to this would be like a can of pinto beans that are drained or a can of black beans that are drained. That would be really good added to this. I've got a five pound bag of tater pots. I'm going to add those on top and I'm actually going to make two dinners out of this. And then you'll top it with cheese. Um, you can wait for it to cool off before you put it in your freezer. But these Pyrex plates are made to be able to go from freezer to oven without breaking. Pyrex has been around forever. And they really do make a great product. But they're made to be safe. You just can't use them on the cooktop. That'll break them. All right. So, just a little more. Are you starting? Are you? Are you? This is done. We're going to top it with cheese, and then you can freeze it. If you want to assemble it for the slow cooker, I am going to pop that in the oven when I cook it. Um, but if you want to stay true to what we're doing here, which is crock pot meal, you'll follow the assembly instructions in the book, and you'll assemble it a little differently so that it can be done in the slow cooker. But, I'm going to do that. Kelsey, I think this is your can. Is this yours? I have one right now, but I... Do you have yours? I don't know. I think it's yours. All right, well then I'll keep it. I'm kidding. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. You haven't stopped? Oh, you are stopped. Have you been baking still? Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. Have you ever made like a zucchini banana bread? Oh, I made zucchini bread. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I follow Joe and I made Yeah, she's got some really good recipes. I have some banana bread back to the other day. Yeah, she's got some good stuff. Maybe we'll, does this sound good? Maybe we'll have this for the next one. Tater tot beef casserole, essentially. Sound okay? <laughs> She's like, yeah, whatever. Okay, so I will top these with shredded cheese and then put foil on them and put them in the freezer and call it a day. Okay, guys, we are going to eat dinner here. I still need to make some refried beans and some rice, which should be very quick. That's going to go with our dinner tonight. These guys are starving. They are so hungry. Kelsey is getting the tortillas done and getting them heated up. Don't forget, where's my book? Okay, so all of the recipes that we made today came from this book right here, which can be downloaded over at getdinnerontheTable.net. You're going to get, in your instant download, you're going to get 30 recipes that are crock pot freezer meals on a budget. It uses common ingredients that you already have on hand, most likely. And it comes with printable labels for each of your recipes. So that this is going to tell you how to assemble it to put it in the freezer. This is going to tell you how to cook it once you get it out of the freezer. So you'll cut these out and put them onto each freezer bag. Now remember, any of these recipes can be converted. I took... Um, this recipe here and I'm going to be cooking it in the oven instead of in the slow cooker but if you follow the directions that are in here for assembly it's a crock pot meal um, but remember anything that can be we can always convert anything to any other you know an oven recipe can be converted to a slow cooker a slow cooker recipe can be converted to oven etc we have the freedom to do that um, 
You just need to know what adjustments to make for cook time and liquids and things of that nature. So there you go. I'm going to tell you really quickly what we made again. We made creamy ranch pork chops. They were super, they looked super delicious. We made garlic lemon butter chicken going in the freezer. We made cranberry orange chicken. That's the one that Kelsey and Lenny and everybody thought was creepy and weird, but it's going to be good. It has cranberries in it. It has uh, orange marmalade. It has French onion powdered mix. Um, and it has Catalina dressing. I can't wait to eat it. I know it's going to be good. Uh, we also, in the slow cooker over here, which I did not go over with you guys how to do it, but the eighth recipe for tonight will be that I have slow cooker chicken fajitas going in the slow cooker. That's super good. We have um, crock pot shredded Korean beef. I used a pot roast for that that I already had on hand because I bought two pot roasts last week at Costco. Saved one of them to use for this recipe. We did a crock pot meatloaf, which can be cooked in the oven if you prefer. Um, and then we did the hearty cowboy supper, which was this right here, and I extended it to make into two different rest into two dinners. Um, if we have people over for dinner, this will be enough for everyone, or if it's just me and the kids, one of these will suffice for all of us. So, and then I have the slow cooker chicken parmesan, which is super, super easy as well. If you will carve out an hour to an hour and a half of time, you can easily um, create seven or even ten meals, throwing it all together. Um, that is so cool. You one, have your whole week done. Right, right. So you can either stick all this in the freezer or stick it in the fridge and cook it as the, like this, the beef is already cooked. So I could probably wait four days to cook this and just put it in the fridge because um, your beef is already cooked. Or they could be like your emergency. Exactly, exactly. Or you can just put them all in the freezer, whatever you want to do. Um, you do it the way you want to do it. But for those of you that don't know what freezer cooking looks like, this is how you do it. And honestly, when you're setting out your time to do this, um, it takes just as much time. If we're waiting for something to bake in the oven, so say we made a casserole and we're waiting for it to cook in the oven, in that time we could be assembling freezer mills. You can either carve out time to do 10 at a time or 30 at a time, or you can just do a few at a time, whichever one you want to do. Or double it and make one for now and one for the freezer. Okay. They're playing games upstairs. Sounds like it's going to fade away. Sounds like they're going to fade away. What happened, Matthew? Nothing. Oh. Nothing. One of Matthew's birds got out. Not fun. Okay, get dinner on the table. Net. You can download this. Crock pot freezer meals on a budget. We will check you guys out later. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna go turn this off, and we're gonna figure out what's going.